Learning how to paper piece does not have to be intimidating, so I put together a few tips to get you started on your paper piecing journey. Let's go ahead and get this paper pieced block pieced. Now the first thing I've done, especially when I started out paper piecing, which was earlier tonight, just kidding, is I went ahead and made out a master block. This is gonna help me see which color goes in which place. Now this is a pretty simple block, but for your more complex paper piece blocks, you're definitely gonna wanna have some kind of guide or color key. So I'm gonna keep that kind of up here just to help me remember. Now, when I'm cutting out the pieces for my, my block, I'm cutting them in bulk. So I know that I want a big square for number one. That means I'm not getting a big piece of fabric and just cutting chunks off of it. It allows me to get into a rhythm nice and quick. And yes, it does use more fabric, but man, it saves you so much time and heartache. And I just want you to be happy. So what I'm gonna do is knowing that fabric one is the blue piece, I'm gonna turn it over and stick that blue fabric right on top. Now I'm using batiks, which don't really have a right or wrong side, and so it doesn't matter which way I put it, but if this were a regular print, I would wanna make sure that the pretty side is facing up. Then I'm gonna add my second step, and according to my master copy, that's gonna be a purple piece, so I'm gonna find where that second step is and I'm gonna fold it on that line. It doesn't have to be perfectly folded on that line, I just want a general guideline. This is important because when I'm laying my fabric over here, if I don't know where to put it, there's a great chance I'm not gonna put it in the correct spot. So now I'm gonna get my purple piece of fabric, which I have cut out in bulk to save me time and heartache, and I'm gonna lay it so that it overlaps that fold for by a quarter of an inch or so. So then when I roll it back over, I can see that when I sew directly on that line between step one and step two, that it's gonna catch both of those pieces of fabric. Now, if you're not sure if it's in the right place, if you have a lamp close by, you can hold it up to a light, which will allow you to see the fabric through the paper and know that you have it in the right place. And the first couple times, take your time because this is where you can really save yourself some trouble. Then I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm going to make my stitch length shorter. I like about a 1.5 stitch length, it's totally up to you. Uh, smaller the stitch length means that the more it's gonna perforate that paper, make that paper easier to rip off, but the smaller your stitches are, the harder they are to rip out should you make a mistake. I'm not saying that you're gonna make a mistake, I'm just saying that's what happens to me. Now when I go to sew on my line, and I'm gonna start just a couple stitches outside of my line, that's gonna help secure that seam. Position it there, and then sew directly on that line. I have my first line, but before I move on, I'm gonna trim this extra fabric because if I leave all that bulky fabric in there, it's not gonna be fun. And I'm gonna flip it over and fold the paper back because I have this fun little tool I'm gonna use that add a quarter ruler. It has a little lip right here, and that lip is gonna fit right against that paper and give me a good quarter of an inch to follow and go right into trimming. Next, I'm gonna press it. Now, you could use a hot, dry iron, but I'm gonna use my little seam roller. That's gonna allow it to lay nice and flat so that I don't have to worry about pressing it. Now, you don't wanna use the iron because it will stretch those pieces out, and we don't want it to get all wonky. We still want it to be nice and precise. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then trimming your block is easy as cutting right on your line. And then you're left with a beautiful, perfectly paper piece block, unless something didn't go right. Now here's the thing, it's not whether you're gonna make a mistake, it's how do we handle the mistakes that you might make. Sometimes you might find that the seam isn't in quite the right place or more often that fabric doesn't quite fit. Let's talk about how to rip out your seams because we have to be very careful that we don't rip this paper, especially now that we have those tighter stitches. Getting a nice sharp seam ripper is gonna be the way to go. And what I'm gonna do is carefully pull out every third or fourth stitch so that I can remove that fabric. There we go. And carefully pull out those stitches so that you can take out the, the fabric without ripping the paper. Now this particular block wouldn't be as much of a problem because it's not that many steps, but if you're 10 steps into a complex block, you're not gonna wanna start over just for one little piece. And then it will allow you to carefully pull that fabric away. There we go, and if needed, you can pull up any of those little threads that are hanging around. And then just repeat and hopefully get it right the second time. 
Now what could happen though is if your paper does rip, let's say that I was a little too aggressive and that paper rips right off, you can use some transparent tape to hold it in place and sew right over that line again. But I know you and that you're brilliant, it's gonna look fine. So once the paper is perfectly pieced, you can sew it into the rest of your quilt. So I'm gonna finish paper piecing the block that this goes to and then I'll show you how easy it is to remove that paper on the back. Now when you're paper piecing a block, Piecing it is only half of the battle, then you have to take off the paper. When I flip it over, you're gonna see this is what the back of the quilt looks like. I have my perfect points, but eventually this is gonna have to come off before I quilt it. Now, when you take that off, it's totally up to you. You can do it block by block or wait till the whole quilt is finished. I personally prefer doing it in front of the TV watching a Chiefs football game, but whatever works for you. But when you're ripping out the paper, you only wanna rip out the pieces that are sewn on all sides. What that means is right here, I haven't sewn this seam yet, so I don't necessarily wanna remove this piece because I wanna have my little guideline when it comes to sewing it together. But let's pretend I wanna go ahead and rip out this piece because I do have all three sides sewn. Well, all I have to do is just gently kinda of try to pull it away from those seams and then rip it. And since I have that nice, thin paper, that's gonna make it easier to rip. And I'm gonna be very careful not pulling too hard because I don't want to rip out the stitches. Now I will say I do prefer using a good quality thread like Aurifil or a nice cotton thread because that's going to prevent those stitches from ripping out. And I'm just going to rip, rip, rip until the whole thing is done. Now I have to say there is something slightly satisfying about just pulling that out and then seeing the pretty piecing underneath. And even these little strips right here need to come out. So just ripping them, pulling them nicely and trying to get them all out. If you're having trouble getting it out, you could spritz it with a little water. That'll help you pull it out. Or a pair of scissors just to kind of poke in there. You can make a little slit and then pull it out. Really, whatever it takes to get the job done. And you'll be left with a lot of little confetti pieces. So hopefully you're planning a party you can use those for. Now on the back of this block, I've went ahead and ripped out all the pieces. And I want to show you that sometimes you're going to get little bitty things stuck in your seams. Now if they're tiny, I would just leave them because it's gonna be fine. You can use tweezers, you can use a cuticle stick, or you can spritz it with water like we talk about. Ultimately, I just wanna make sure that most of the paper is off and that it's gonna look great when I quilt it. You can do so much with paper piecing. That's why I put together my favorite paper piecing resources. Enroll in a Craftsy membership trial and you can view them all for free this month. Details are below.